China's Premier Wen Jiabao has arrived in Copenhagen for the leaders' meeting of the UN Climate Conference. He's one of over 100 leaders attending the gathering in the Danish capital today and tomorrow. China's Foreign Ministry said Wen would deliver a keynote speech detailing China's latest negotiating stance. Analysts said Wen was expected to work to heal the division between the richer and poorer developing countries, which partly contributed to the near breakdown of the talks earlier this week. The conference reaches its climax on Friday when 120 heads of state will try to reach a political deal on tackling climate change. Meanwhile, a top Chinese diplomat at Copenhagen has warned developed countries against using climate change as an excuse to set up trade barriers. Yu Qingtai, China's climate change ambassador, said rich nations were potentially raising a new hurdle to reaching a deal at the UN-led climate talks. He said developed countries should not think that slapping carbon tariffs on imports from countries with different emissions control regimes would substitute for reaching a a global deal to tackle warming. China's AH1N1 flu death toll has leapt by more than a third in recent days to 442. The Ministry of Health said the sharp rise came days after the government warned of a holiday season spike in infections. Of the total deaths, 116 were reported in the week of December 7th to 13th. The latest total number of H1N1 flu cases across the country is nearly 108,000. Last week, China pledged to step up the flu vaccination program that's seen more than 34 million people inoculated already. China's Association for Cross-Straits Relations has said it's confident about security during a visit by its top envoy to Taiwan next week. The statement came after threats of protests from the island's opposition party, the DPP. Chen Yulin will visit Taiwan from December 21st to 25th for a fourth round of talks to discuss economic cooperation and improving cross-straits relations. His last visit a year ago was marked by chaos as protesters clashed with police in demonstrations outside his hotel in Taipei. At the meeting, the two sides are expected to discuss issues relating to a wide-ranging trade agreement Taiwan hopes will be completed by the end of next year. A new United States Census Bureau projection claims India will be the world's most populous country in 2025, surpassing China. It also estimates that the number of people in China will peak in 2026 because of declining fertility. The Bureau suggests that the projected peak in China, 1.4 billion people, will be lower than previously estimated and that it will occur sooner. With the fertility rate declining to fewer than 1.6 births per woman in this decade from 2.2 in 1990, China's overall population growth rate has slowed to 0.5% annually. In contrast, India's 1.4% growth rate is being driven by a fertility rate of 2.7 births per woman. After China and India, the most populous countries are the United States, Indonesia, Brazil and Pakistan. The wife and brother of a U.S. green card holder who set fire to himself to prevent the destruction of his father's house are to sue those behind the demolition. The family say a village committee in rural Beijing used strong-arm tactics to throw them out and leveled the house without permission. Si Sin Ju set fire to himself on Monday when six men physically evicted him and his family from the house. He's recuperating in hospital from severe burns but is no longer in critical condition. Si's wife, who is a U.S. citizen, told media the family would seek help from lawyers. The 3,000 square foot home housed C's 81 year old mother, his brother, sister in law, his wife, and his daughter. Last month, a woman in the southern city of Chengdu set fire to herself to protest the demolition of her property. She later died of her injuries. Work has begun in southern China and what engineers say will be the world's longest sea crossing bridge. The construction will link southern Guangdong province, China's main manufacturing hub, with Hong Kong and Macau. When completed in 2016, officials say it will be around 30 miles long. The bridge will be a six-lane expressway that can handle earthquakes up to a magnitude of 8.0, strong typhoons and the impact of a 300,000 ton vessel. Driving times between Zhuhai on the mainland and Macau to Hong Kong will be cut from three hours to around 30 minutes. It's estimated the bridge will cost around $11 billion.